going to use my 100 watt laser to find out the best settings to cut uh, 1 8th of, just over 3 millimeter thick of red acrylic plastic, which actually is the best material to cut in any CO2 laser. And in fact, we're going to be making a tool for my fiber laser, which is just over there. So to find out the exact dimensions of the tool that we're going to make, which is actually a focusing tool, we're going to need to fire the fiber laser up and find out the correct focus. So this is my fiber laser setup. This is a 30 watt standard Q-switch laser. This type of fiber laser will engrave any type of metal, including silver, gold, aluminium, stainless steel. In actual fact, it will, not strictly supposed to, but it will actually um, do colour engraving on stainless steel only. Actually, stainless steel and titanium steel. To my knowledge, it, then it will only do black, quite a nice black, uh, in brass and also steel, standard steel. For any engraving work into metal, a fiber laser is the type of laser you require. A CO2 laser won't touch it. Okay, so the program that you use for the fiber laser is called EasyCAD 2. So I'll just put you up to EasyCAD 2 and I'll show you just very simply how that works. Okay, so this is EasyCAD 2. Now, we're going to need some sort of object or area to be able to focus the laser with or give the laser an area to work with. So we're just going to come up here and click on square and we're just going to quickly draw a square right in the middle of our template. Now this template is set up for the particular lens or focal length lens that we are using which is a 110 millimeter so you notice from here to here is 110 so it's 55 this way 55 that way and so on so we're going to do 10 millimeter square and we'll apply that so, a fiber laser varies quite a little bit from a CO2 laser. So now what we need to do is tell the laser what sort of scanning pattern to do on this square. So we come up here to hatch. So we'll just pull this over a bit out of the way. We're just going to do a simple hatch. So we can do with any pen color you notice up here there's pen colors so this is a layer okay so we're just using the black layer at the moment which is indicated here and we've enabled this hatch pattern on hatch pat pat we've enabled this hatch pattern one by clicking that all calc just means that it's going to continually sort of go from one side to another without a break. That's what it actually means. And this is the type of pattern we're just going to uh, fire the laser from left to right. And the laser is quickly going to jump down to the next line without firing. Then start up again and fire till it reaches the other side of the square. Uh, zero angle so it's going to start here and fire to here at zero angle straight across 
Um, that's oh, okay. Line spacing, pretty self-explanatory. Every 0 0.01 of a millimeter, it's going to progress through the square. So as far as that goes, that's all we're going to do. Um, second, second hatch is not enabled, nor is the third one. So it is only going to do that particular pattern then. So we're going to OK that and immediately it, it has worked it out and done all the background G code and it has displayed a completely uh, coloured in box, which is really what we want. Now then, another way that fibre lasers differ is that you have th basically three controls here to control. Now this is set at the the base setting then. Well we don't want that. Um, 500 is okay. That's 500 millimeters per second. 50% um, power. That's okay. Frequency. In this case actually we're going to use the uh, standard settings. Um, now Frequency, now a lot of people are having trouble with that. I will do a dedicated video later on about frequency, but in this case it's uh, 20 hertz. Okay, so all that is fine for just finding the focus of this laser. Now I shall bring the camera down to the piece of work. Okay, so to alter the focus of the fiber laser. Incidentally this is the lens here just on the underside of this unit. This is a Galvo head. Inside here there are two mirrors that operate very very quickly. Uh, a little bit like bees wings. They're as fast as that too. Um, so the focal distance is very precise. You have a about a two millimeter range only. To alter the focus you move this up and down by this wheel here. Okay, so we'll take it up a little bit. What I'm going to do is fetch you in close to this area so you can see what the laser is doing and how the laser alters or differs with focus. Uh, this is a piece of test aluminium. We have a secondary po laser pointer inside the head of the laser that uh, indicates to you exactly the center of the work then. So I'm just going to turn the laser on. That's just the cooling fans that you can hear. Now I'm going to make this laser pointer run around the outside of the square which gives me an area that I can sort of zoom in on to. So I'm going to say okay red light it. So there, the square is going to appear there. So I can turn that off now. Now I'm going to start the laser going. Not an awful lot will happen until I have it in focus and you'll see it gradually come into focus and I will just be bringing the laser head down. So here we go. Um, continuous mark. Mark. Okay, so you can see that's the laser actually running now. The laser pointer automatically comes on as well. And you can see that it's not doing anything really. So I'm just gradually bringing it down, bringing it down. You can see a few sparks starting to happen. Gradually coming down a millimeter at a time.
coming down. Oh, here we go. So now you can see the laser starting to come into focus. Okay, so the brighter that goes, the obviously the more in focus there is. So it's now starting to fade. So I've gone past the focus point. So I know I'm going to come back up. Now you find where its brightest point is, which is about there. Yep, that's its brightest point there, where it's sparking. Okay, I'll stop the laser now. And just another bit of a demonstration. I'm going to pick the power right up now to 95%. Okay, so now we've got to get an accurate measurement between the top of the workpiece to the underside of the lens here because I'm going to be measuring off the underside of the lens here. And that is 166 millimeters. <laughs> 